Hey, it's Emily and this is my mid-year freak out tag. So first things first, I just want to say apologies for the background. I'm literally moving like this week and so I have have started packing up the books. But I wanted to do a final kind of sit down video in front of these bookcases before everything moves to the new flat. So here we have it, the mid-year freak out tag. There's quite a few questions, so I am going to try and breeze through them very quickly. Um, some of the books I don't have with me because they are packed or elsewhere <laughs> at my parents' house or a couple of them I've unhauled. So yeah, but without further ado, I think let's jump on in to the first question. So the first question is the best book that you've read in 2024 so far. And for that, I've picked Agatha Christie by Lucy Worsley. This was the first book I read this year and it was five stars. I absolutely loved it. Tabbed, I don't know if you can see how many tabs I've put in. Had such a fun time reading it. Definitely was probably my favourite book so far this year. In my little like tournament tree, this is winning at the minute for the first six months. So yeah, definitely my favourite book of the year so far. This is a biography written by Lucy Worsley about Agatha Christie and it was so nice to read about her life and I loved the TV show that uh, Lucy Worsley did on Agatha Christie and this just kind of covers everything in a lot more detail so yeah that was my favourite book. Next up is the best sequel you've read so far in 2024 and for that I have picked Insurgent by Veronica Roth which is the second book in the Divergent series. Um, if you didn't know I read the Divergent trilogy for the first time this year and this is my favourite from the trilogy without a doubt. So this definitely fits for the best sequel you've read. I think I gave it 4.5 stars and then Divergent was 4. I can't remember if I gave Allegiant 3.5 or 4 because of the ending. <laughs> but yeah, this is definitely the best sequel I've read this year. Bit late to the game, but definitely enjoyed it. Definitely surprised me as well. <laughs> that was definitely rapid fire, that question. Another honourable mention is The Mantis, which I finished a couple days ago. And this is the third book in the like bullet train assassin series by Kataro Saka. Absolutely loved it, I gave it 4.5. So yeah, this is definitely another contender for best sequel as well. I don't think I've got the order of these questions right, but the next one I have written down is a new release that you have, but haven't gotten around to yet. And for me, that is the reappearance of Rachel Price. As you can see, I did start it. <laughs> I got 80 pages in, um, but I decided to temporarily DNF it. It was just not the right time to read it. And I was really disappointed by that because it was a really highly anticipated release for me. I didn't then want to not enjoy it because of like the frame of mind I was in. So I decided to put this down and put it off and I'm hoping to read it maybe in the autumn sometime. So but yeah, this is definitely a new release that I really want to get to, but I just haven't gotten to it yet. Then we have the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. For me, I have two options written down. One is We Self Murders by uh, Richard Osman. I haven't actually properly read the Thursday Murder Club series. I've only read the first one, but I did enjoy it. Um, it was quite a few years ago though. So it was literally as an e-arc from NetGalley before the first one came out. So it's been quite a while. So I'm not sure I'd remember anything about it. However, this new series does intrigue me. The other one I have noted down is I Was a Teenage Slasher. Is that what it's called? <laughs> Which is a fun 1980s horror slashery book. I really like a slasher kind of 80s vibe. I think it kind of flips the, that whole trope, like, well, not trope, genre <laughs> on its head. So I'm definitely really intrigued to see what the author does. I can't remember the author's name off the top of my head. But yeah, I definitely want to read that in the autumn around like Halloween. So but yeah, those are the two answers for that question. The next question is your favourite reread from this year so far. And for that, I have picked Burn by Patrick Ness. I reread this and then tabbed it up. I first read this in 2020 when it first came out in like May time, I want to say, June. It was definitely around like the first lockdown. And I read it again this year and I still really enjoyed it. I gave it five stars again. This has dragons in and it's 1950s America. Um, and there's, yeah, dragons. <laughs> I did cry reading it the first time, though I don't think I did the second time because I knew what was coming in. It didn't have as much of an impact on me. But it was still an emotional read and just I highly, highly recommend it. I don't know how else to describe it because there's like FBI, dragons. It's so good. <laughs> That's definitely my favourite reread of the year so far. I haven't really reread any books, to be honest. I think this, this might be the only reread anyway. I'm trying to think. The next question is then the biggest disappointment of the year for you. And that for me, hands down, was All the Little Lights by someone Maguire, Jamie Maguire. I have unhauled this. I gave it 1.5 stars. It is the lowest book I've rated this year. It was so disappointing. I've had it on my shelves though since I was about 17, 18 and I finally got around to it and I knew it was a YA, well it was pitched as a YA romance. It really wasn't. It was kind of like mystery thriller in there, romance in there, very bizarre mental health rep that 
I don't think really did it justice at all <laughs> and yeah I was just so I couldn't believe how rubbish it was I think I sent like Chloe and Rebecca long voice notes when I finished it just about how ridiculous it was because it, yeah it just wasn't for me and I'm happy to leave that book in the past and I have unhauled it <laughs> I don't need that in my forever collection then we have the biggest surprise of the year so far and for me hands down is probably Divergent by Veronica Roth like this whole trilogy. I had no intention of ever reading this. If it wasn't for my best friend telling me he wanted to watch the movies with me I probably wouldn't have read the whole series. He got me the set for Christmas and so I read them. For a YA dystopian I didn't have high hopes but actually I was pleasantly surprised and I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought and like I said earlier I think I gave this four Insurgent 4.5 and I think Allegiant 3.5 so definitely a big surprise. The next question is a new favourite author. Now I went through my spreadsheet and I really struggled to find one. A lot of my highly rated books are from authors I've read from before, a lot of the new authors or debut authors I didn't necessarily rate very highly or that I'd only tested one book out like I, I don't I feel like I can't give someone a new favourite author title if I've only read one book. I don't know, maybe that's just me. But I guess this is a new author that I did enjoy from, and that's Elle Kennedy. Um, for the first time I picked up, I've read The Deal and The Mistake, and I'm going to be reading the score, like, next week. So I guess this counts for the prompt. Um, I will definitely be picking up more from Elle Kennedy. I, I wouldn't class her as a favourite author, but out of all the options from this year, she was probably the top runner. <laughs> so, yeah. Then we have a newest fictional crush. I don't read a lot of romance. I think I am reading a bit more recently. Like I said, I picked up a couple of L. Kennedys. But overall, I don't read a lot of romance or pure romance. I don't know. So I think I'm going to have to skip this question because I don't read a lot. So I don't then have a fictional crush. I don't know. Five years ago, I would have given you a list of answers, but <laughs> not so much anymore. And then very similarly the next one is a newest favourite character and for this I had to think about because very similarly I don't know I don't feel like I get attached to like thriller characters or mystery characters I don't know I just was struggling and so I ended up going for Cory Sensei from Assassination Classroom um, I've read the first two volumes I've been watching the tv show over a very long period of time now <laughs> about like eight months I've been watching the tv show this is the only real manga I've read it's the only manga I own is the first two volumes of it but I just found the teacher Koro Sensei funny so <laughs> I guess I went with this because of that even in the anime it just made me laugh it's the only anime I've ever watched <laughs> but yeah I just thought he was funny so he ended up winning for that prompt then the next question is a book that made you cry and for that I picked The Dead Romantics which is currently at my parents house I wasn't expecting this book to hit me so emotionally and I just remember being on the M25 in traffic and like crying <laughs> while listening to the audiobook on my drive home from work. I wasn't like sobbing or anything but I'd like I don't cry very often at books and that one got me so yeah I guess that's saying something about the dead romantics but yeah it was a five star read definitely not to read more from Ashley Poston but yeah that is probably the only book this year that's made me cry. So that had to win for that question. And then on the other hand, the next question is a book that made you happy. I have two answers for this that are kind of similar. First one I've already mentioned, and that is Agatha Christie by Lucy Worsley. I just was obsessed with reading it. I was telling my friend all about it. I read it in person with him when he was on the Xbox and I kept like interrupting his game to like tell him things, read quotes. I just, when I was reading this, I never wanted to put it down. I was obsessed and I just had such a happy feeling while reading this that I don't get very often with books. Yeah, I just adored it and it just made me so happy reading. The other one is A Caribbean Mystery by Agatha Christie. I wasn't expecting to love it as much as I did. I think it helped that I was on holiday and this is set in the Caribbean, obviously. And I just had such a fun time reading it. The vibes were perfect. And yeah, I just had a good time reading it. The next question is your favourite book to movie adaptation that you've watched this year. I think the only one I've actually seen <laughs> is the Divergent series. So I guess that has to win by default. But after watching Allegiant, I was like, that didn't match any of the book and it turns out there's meant to be a second part to Allegiant but it got cancelled so I think Allegiant wasn't there <laughs> as a movie like book to movie adaptation but I guess the first two were all right <laughs> I also wanted to give a shout out to and then there were none which I haven't seen like a tv or movie adaptation of but I did go to see the tour in theatre for the play and that was incredible I saw the official tour the one I saw in Exeter very recently was interesting it was an Amjam performance and the ending was wild and completely different to the book and almost, I don't know, I was laughing. <laughs> but the official tour was incredible, so that I had to shout out as well. The next question is the prettiest book that you have 
pulled or read this year. I have a few options here. The first one is Cross the Line purely because of the sprayed edges, which is an F1 romance. So I just love the sprayed edges. <laughs> so that's why I chose that one. Then we have another special edition of Agatha Christie, uh, Parallel End House, which is the newest one they've released, I think like a month ago. I picked it up last week with Rachel, but I just love the colour scheme, like the pink chef's kiss. And another one that I really like is Pride and Prejudice, which is my current read. <laughs> I just love foiling. <laughs> so yeah, that's that one. And then I think we're on to the final question. So yes, finally, it is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? And I think my priority TBR is my 12 from 12 Friends series that I was doing. And I've got quite a few books still to read. I think I've got eight left to read before the end of the year, maybe nine. <laughs> so I definitely need to cram them into my monthly TBRs and really make them a priority as opposed to the other like 300 books on my shelf that I still need to read. Some of these include The Hunger Games, Book Lovers by Emily Henry, A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon, A Very Large Expanse of Sea, Playing Bad Heroines, there's quite a few of them. So yeah, and that wraps up the mid-year freak out tag and my last sit down video probably in this house. Crazy. <laughs> so yes, thank you very much for watching. Please give it a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you're new around here because I really do appreciate each and every one of you. I recently hit a mini milestone of mine with subscribers so thank you very much to everyone who's joined recently but yeah I think with that I'll leave that video here and coming up soon I think I have a moving vlog um I have a come book shopping video with uh, Rachel and my other friend I still have a couple other videos that I need to put together and edit but eventually they'll come out <laughs> even if they are quite late but yeah I'll leave it there <laughs> thank you again for watching and I'll see you soon with a brand new video bye